Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of October 11th. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we continued with our two half-hour streaming comedies, and what a delight it is to have two half-hour things to watch (laughs) instead of two-hour-long or two-hour-long things. You just get it done so quickly. Mm -hmm. When you look at the, how much longer is this to go, and there's like five or eight minutes, yes! (laughs) But both of them were enjoyable and passed quickly, so... Uh, we watched these two half-hour streaming comedies, one super sunny and one more dark and mysterious. (laughs) Uh, the sunny one, as always, was Ted Lasso, the episode for the children, which is season one, episode four. For all of you watching season two right now and loving it or griping about it, we're still on season one and we're on a high. So we're not going to see, look at your tweets and comments and about season two. That's right. I can't hear you. Keeps popping up on my Facebook feed stuff about season two. Stop it. I don't see it. (laughs) Season one is still quite lovely. This episode was about a fundraiser that Rebecca was hosting in the absence now of her husband. Apparently he used to be the big wheel on it, but now she is planning it all by herself. It's a fundraiser for underprivileged children. There is an auction of footballers, I guess we call them, Mm -hmm. auction of the players on the team. And then there is supposed to be a musical guest. And this was an episode in which almost entirely Rebecca was not the villain. Not even a tiny little bit. No, She didn't do anything shady at all. She was just completely wrapped up in the responsibility of doing this thing and the fear of screwing it up and also awareness that everybody still wishes her husband was in charge of it. Right. Uh, and so the first thing that goes wrong is that the musical act isn't going to appear. And then the reprehensible husband does show up and sort of takes over in his super oily way. I will not call it charming though. Other people may find it. So we clearly are not meant to. No. And, uh, he's quite a piece of work. And, you know, does the auction. And, and so this is, it was basically, I really enjoyed seeing that's that really vulnerable side of Rebecca. Mm-hmm. And I also love the developing fresh friendship between her and Keely. Yes. And I enjoyed the moment in the bathroom where Keely mentioned that when she was 16, she was dating a 23 year old footballer. And now she's 30 something and she's still dating a 23 year old footballer. Right. <laughs> Because I had recently been looking up ages of various actors on this show and noticed that she was quite a bit older than the actor playing Jamie and thought, hmm, is she supposed to be that young? Apparently mm-hmm. not. So um, the the truly gobsmacking revelation was that the <laughs> actor who plays Nate is 41. I thought he was a kid. I thought Nate was supposed to be a kid. Is <laughs> Nate supposed to be a middle-aged man? I feel like he's makes supposed it to be considerably more pathetic. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't think he's supposed to be forty-one, but I don't <laughs> think he's supposed to be like nineteen either. Okay, he just has a very—he can look very young, and the, the character seems very naive. Yes. Agreed. So I just assumed that it was that he was young. Mm-hmm. I suppose this will develop, okay. but anyway. Uh, so, and Ted was just his teddiest, even bringing in the street musician to replace the big star who was supposed to play. Turns out to be great. Everybody loves it. Everybody's dancing. (laughs) But Ted, Ted was very Ted, but he also was not fooled by uh, Rebecca's husband, Rupert. Yes. He he saw what he was doing and he called Uh him out on it. Yes, um, he did. Which was not a very Ted thing. (laughs) Yeah, but he did it in a very, you know, pleasant way. Oh, yeah. the same upbeat, positive way. He just, you know, I see see you. Right. I see who you are. Um, And also sort of did the same thing with Roy, who was complaining about how young and insufferable Jamie was and 
Ted said, you've been playing since you were that age. What were you like when back then? And right. I had to admit he was young and insufferable. <laughs> exactly. So, he did a lot of, a lot of uh, helping people letting people know that he saw them right. in this episode. I do have to take up. issue with a couple of uh, statements in the Wikipedia summary for this oh. episode because, you know, I like to read them just to sure. just to make sure I remember everything. Uh-huh. And first of all, it says that Rebecca convinces Keeley to break up with Jamie. No! No. That is not true. I mean, she she pointed out something about Jamie <laughs> to Keely. Yeah. But that was Keely's own doing. Oh, yes. You know? Well, and I would say it was also Jamie's own doing by being yeah. just such a gigantic ass. Yes. And Rebecca did also let Keely know that the the person who was um yes, bidding, you know, she Mm-hmm. She mentioned she let her know that there was possibly some cheating yes. going on, and then she told she. But the thing I was thinking about that she said before was thinking about accountability, and that, right that got Keely's wheels turning. But she yes. she certainly did it on her own, and then absolutely the second piece of the of the Wikipedia summary that failed to convince me is. <laughs> Roy and Jamie make up and resolve not to fight anymore. <laughs> oh, that's a wishful view of that yeah. scene. I mean, for for that five minutes, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Possibly they, till the end of the party if they don't cross each other, but... Right, they definitely had a, a, a breakthrough in terms yes. of their, you know, admitting how they feel about each other and that, mm-hmm. you know, each one of them has kind of a legitimate point right though they may be though they are taking it much too far but there was never any like okay from now on we're buddies i mean no no. i mean there was a sharing of perspectives and an appreciation of it and sort of a seeing each other it's sort of a theme of the episode is people seeing other people yes for what you know for what they are for better for worse yeah but i think roy still said he still hates that old guy that he hated when he was a kid. Right, right. So it's pretty clear that there will still be tension. But, yeah, I don't think it's as clear as they made up and everything's going to be sunny going forward. No. I think it's they had a moment of insight. Right. That will be quickly forgotten next time they're ticking each other's off. (laughs) Ticking each other off, yes. I so hope Keeley trades auction uh, purchases with the old lady and <laughs> takes the day with Roy and lets Jamie have whatever's coming to him. Yeah. But, uh, uh, that was, it was just, it was interesting that it was an episode. I mean, it was almost entirely at the, the benefit. Event. There was a little mm-hmm. bit beforehand. Right. But, uh, it gave people like different, uh, scenes to kind of see kind of scenes to play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, certainly introducing the reprehensible Rupert was good. Right. And ick. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. You know, I know it feels awful for Rebecca, but oh my goodness, is she better off with him? Yeah. That dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they almost made him too evil yeah. because he's he, exceptionally oily. Yeah, because you can't see. You know, what she ever, I mean, I think yeah. she was humiliated by his, yes. by his actions. Um, but is she sorry that he's not around anymore? I hope not. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. But I mean, I guess he's probably some somebody who makes things very easy. Mm-hmm. And when you are in his good graces, he's probably very alluring but once he turns on you, you realize. Right. It. Yeah. So, mm, I imagine we will be seeing it again. Unfortunately. <laughs> and we also, speaking of, you know, new perspectives on people, we saw right. Coach Beard with a lady friend. <laughs> yes. And totally not getting when it was time to stop playing chess. Right. Not. So, not... 
not completely efficient and knowledgeable in everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, how, I mean, I guess this is going to come to a head next week. He said his wife and son are coming to visit. Mm-hmm. Ted did, right? Yes. But I, I kind of don't like that aspect of it, that he has this sad personal situation. Mm-hmm. I want him to be happy all the time. I want him to be Mr. Positive. I don't want to feel sorry for him for whatever's going on. Uh Um, But we'll see how that develops. So far, everything I've gone, oh, about has turned out really nice. I mean, even this one, I kept expecting something really embarrassing and humiliating to happen to Rebecca, Uh other than just the fact that her ex-husband was there being his smarmy self. Right. But it really didn't. Everything's okay. Yeah, and she looked good There's in her no dress. Way. And she got good, yes. good, uh, good red pictures. carpet pictures. That is that is a fun sisterhood moment. And That's she got to ride in a rickshaw. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. With her new That's pal, a fun Keely. friendship. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. That, that Rebecca is letting her in mm-hmm. when there would have been a time when she would not have. Right. But uh, she snuck in in a time of vulnerability, and then she's not going to go away. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that was a delightful episode uh, in which a uh, a famous uh, musician did not show up. And uh, on Only Murders in the Building, a famous musician was sort of the centerpiece of the show and acquitted himself quite amusingly. I yes. <laughs> sting in the sting. Yes, yes. So they had, con- uh, the, our three podcasters had convinced themselves that the murderer of Tim Kono, as well as the murderer of Evelyn and almost Oliver's dog, who, thank goodness, as we discussed last week, did indeed survive right. his poisoning. They have decided that this is clearly Sting because of Oliver's uh, encounter with him in the elevator mm-hmm. and his animus towards the dog towards animals. Uh, <laughs> yes, animals. Tw- and and you know he had, com- I guess, was in the folder of people who had complained about Tim Kono. Tim Kono had lost him a ton of money, right. I guess. So there was a connection, and so of course it must be him. And they go to talk to the crime podcaster they are so enamored of. So yes, Tina Fey does return, mm-hmm. and she gives him gives them sort of a little bit of advice whilst doing other things (laughs) and uh so they go to him with a turkey (laughs) because they can't think of anything else right and uh, sting admits that he killed tim kono but then reveals that it's because he told him to kill himself and then he did but now if it's a murder then he didn't do it yay then he's happy (laughs) and he's happy but uh he he performs as himself Quite amusingly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with a obvious good sense of humor. So good for him. Right. Nice to see you, man. Still doesn't quite answer Go make the a question record, please. of why he did this. <laughs> why but... Sting? Sting is who they could get, apparently. Yeah. So perhaps and, they uh, brought him know. a turkey when That's they right. asked him to do this. <laughs> and, and, and certainly the, you know, the whole vibe of some of his music fits Mm -hmm. so it's like we got to get a member of the police let's try sting first and if he can't do it we'll go down the list (laughs) (laughs) and sting was game good for sting Mm -hmm. you know get your face out there man and uh we also found out this was indeed as i think we had talked about last week sooner or later we were going to get us an episode saying what the mystery was about steve martin's background and this time we found it out that Lucy is, in fact, not his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend, but the daughter of his ex-girlfriend and with whom he had a close bond. And then the mom decided she didn't want to be with him anymore and took Lucy away. And he hasn't seen her since. So, so much sadder than an ex-girlfriend. Yes. Or wife, honestly. Um, And unexpected. So he went out on a date with the bassoon player right. after just the cutest bassoon squeeze box duetting <laughs> from their respective windows. <laughs> and uh, she bared her soul in a way that maybe one doesn't do on the first date, but okay. Right. And he did not reciprocate 
with the bearing of souls. And so she kind of said, you know, he, he accidentally said that she seemed like she had a lot of baggage and that was that. So at some point he realizes what he has to do and he goes back and he tells her this story about his ex. When he, when he said the name of the ex and it wasn't Lucy, I thought, oh gosh, is he making this story up? But then, oh, uh-huh. right. uh, oh, mm-hmm. really? Oh, not sure I buy a seven-year-old wanting an omelet every morning, but okay. <laughs> that was very sweet. <sighs> so, uh, and then they, they wind up, they're going to have a second date. So had we seen before him being followed around by imaginary characters? Or was that just for this episode? That was just this episode. Okay. I mean, I, didn't I think remember there has been some other sort of magical, realist, fantastical yeah. kind of stuff. Um, but that was the first time for him. I just would have thought we would have seen it before if he was regularly followed around by them. It just seemed kind of convenient for this episode. They just said, oh, how about if? Right. In the episode, he tells this story. We set up this little thing. Yeah. All right. Well, two extras got a little extra pay that day. So <laughs> yes. Good for them. And they needed a device so that you could quickly know <laughs> that he fixed his problem by by telling. Yes. Um, yes. What's her name? Jan about it. I think we would have known that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other major development, I guess, aside from the fact that Mabel figures out where Tim Kono was going to go and who he was going to meet, and sets out to attend that meeting, I guess. But she is also busted by Oliver's son, right. who remembers her from the old days and remembers that she was friends with Tim Kono and lets his dad know that, which is information his dad and his dad's friend had not pre- previously had. Right. So now they realize there is much more to Mabel than they knew. But that was at the very end of the episode. So that those chickens will come home to roost next week. Right. Or perhaps since it's a building in New York, I should say those pigeons will come. (laughs) Something's going to be roosting. They will, unless something happens to Mabel from the tie-dye man who is following her. That's true. As she exits the building. How have we seen the tie-dye? What what was the previous mention of the tie-dye man? Because when Steve, I think Steve Martin mentioned it in this one, and I didn't remember what the deal was with the tie-dye man. It was in a either... A flashback, I think, of when everyone was exiting the building during the fire alarm oh. that happened mm-hmm. when Tim died. Um, okay. And you saw that he, the tie-dyed hoodie, was going up the stairs while ah. everyone else was going down. Totally missed that. Yeah. I've heard them mention him since and went, okay, I'm sure that'll become clear at one time. But mm-hmm. uh, thank you for having noticed that. I have a certain degree of confidence that Mabel will survive any encounter <laughs> yes. with the tie-dye man at this point in the season. Certainly, Since yes. Selena Gomez is an executive producer, and I'm pretty sure she wants to be in the whole series. But when she gets back, in whatever shape she gets back, she's going to have some splaining to do. Yes. And uh, are we to believe that they're recording all of this stuff and actually releasing episodes as they go along? Apparently, because, I mean, that's how the the son <laughs> figured out that it was the Mabel that he knew yes. because he said, oh, I listened to your podcast, Dad. Uh-huh. So, okay. <laughs> Did Sting sign a permission slip for interviewing him and <laughs> casting aspersions on him? No, and it, when they interviewed Howard, the cat, Dad, you know, yes. Evelyn's uh-huh. bereaved owner, um... <laughs> They made a big point out of, like, surreptitiously telling him, but telling him nonetheless that they were recording. Um, And then they completely didn't do that with Sting, even though they, you know, Oliver was, like, talking into his shirt. Yes. To where he presumably had some sort of (laughs) microphone. So. Sting's very capable assistant looks like she would just squash all of this like a bug. (laughs) Right. There's a cease and desist letter already on their door when they get back home. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, this this is one of those suspending of disbelief things, yes, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Although I'm glad we're not actually hearing 
episodes of the podcast. Oh my gosh, yes. It's so much better left to imagination. Yes. <laughs> Just seeing the title of it on a, a pretend podcast player at the beginning is sufficient. Right. And the occasional, like, we're all in the closet because we're recording yes. or little things like that. It is a very fun show. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it, even though I feel like there are plot holes big enough to sinkhole the entire Arconia and have it disappear from sight. But still, <laughs> it's delightful. It is. And I think, you know, part of that is it's only 10 episodes. Yes. And I think we'd rather have it be 10 episodes with <laughs> yes. with some plot holes versus Indeed. 22 episodes oh, goodness, in no. excruciating detail. Yes. So. This is not, this is a souffle. Right. It just needs to just keep being light and airy. That is yes. absolutely cool. Right. We shall enjoy the performances and the outfits and the, and the decor. Yes. And the delightful, amusing plot twists. We're not going to give too much thought to the actual mystery. Right. I don't think that is the intention. And I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it a lot. Have I mentioned that I'm really happy it's a half an hour? <laughs> half an hour is perfect. <laughs> just a little, just like, you know, uh, Oliver and his dips. Just like a little dip. It's, it's right. just like every week we just take a little, you know, we got about 10 carrot sticks and we dip them in the hummus and we're good. Right. Don't need a full meal. It is a full meal. It is a meal. That's what it Oliver is a meal. would argue. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Interesting that I call Martin Short's character Oliver, but I call call Steve Martin's character Steve Martin. <laughs> what is it? Charles. What is it? Charles. <laughs> I got to write that down. Anyway, so next week. We shall watch the only murders in the building episode entitled Twist. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that is season one, episode five, and also season one, episode five of Ted Lasso, which is called Tan Lines. Alrighty then. And that is going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.